Now, you've got to decide what color a swim jig, because in my book, and you can write this down, in my book, there's three colors of swim jigs. White, black and blue, green pumpkin. Psh, throw all the rest of them in the trash. That's, a, that's the God honest truth in my opinion. I think we get consumed as bass fishermen getting so many colors trying to figure so many things out. I can promise you throughout the day, real quick like, they're going to tell you that they like these two colors, green pumpkin, black and blue, or they like this color, white. It's one or the other, all right? Sometimes the water clarity is going to, well, all the time, water clarity is going to dictate that. The morning time and water clarity, all right? Now, trailers, uh, great trailers to use on your swim jigs and such. Some of you like to use a paddle tail. Some of you might just use a regular uh, uh, crawl style trailer. My Tackle HD crawl is not, not one that I like to use on a swimming bait. I like to use it on a flipping bait. But something with a lot of action that goes like this or something with a lot of action that goes like this. A lot of the baits too, the bigger the bait and the bulkier the bait is, the higher in the water that thing's going to ride unless that you got to, to work it, okay? So use that to your advantage as well. Now, don't, with a swim jig, guys, don't go in there and be pansies, all right? You better have you about 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon and get after it. You can't get away throwing around boat docks, boat dock corners and obstacles for these bass and in grass. Now, if I'm a grass, I use braid, okay? Most of the time in grass, I'll use braid. If I'm not in grass, I use fluorocarbon most of the time. Very rarely do I use, I never use braid in a swim jig unless there's grass around. That's just me. So, so what I do in that time of year too, or throughout the whole year, is I use a rod bigger than most people do and it's way more effective for me. I can manipulate my cast or my retrieve, I should say my retrieve, by holding that bait up high like this Instead, in the summertime when I'm holding it like this and I'm bringing it on. So hold your rod up high. These are little things you probably already know. But this is a university. And these, this is kind of graduate stuff in my opinion. All right. So we might go to kindergarten level here too. All right. So hold your rod up. 50 to 65 pound braid is sufficient. Anything less than that, I don't own it. All right. Slow roll that buzz bait at 50. As that water temperature starts to warm up, pick the pace up on that buzz bait. Now, my rule of thumb, and this is just my rule of thumb, and I'm only known for catching bass on a couple of things. So my rule of thumb, in the springtime, I like to use a white buzz bait. If the water's got a little color to it, I might use a white and chartreuse buzz bait with a silver blade, all right? In the fall, and when I say fall, I'm gonna say September. Starting in September, Throw that down, put that away, and I'll go with a black buzz bait with a gold blade. Now, why is that? I don't know because I'm not very scientific, all right? <laughs> it's just something to do. A lot of anglers will sit up and tell you, well, you've got the bar bar barometric pressures of this, and this is what uh, makes me do this or that. Mm -mm, I don't do that. I just do it because that's what's worked over the years. So why reinvent it? Why fix a wheel that's not broken? I don't know what, is that how you say that? I don't know. Anyway, all right, yeah, you get it. All right, this is a one ounce flutter spoon, River to Sea made, and what this does better than all the other flutter spoons, go ahead, try it out. Call me, call me a liar, but I'm telling you right now, this spoon is better than the rest of them because it does one thing better than the other flutter spoons. It falls away from you backs up away from you better than another spoon. Now, why is that important? Because it's going to get to a shaded area that your buddy, who is a novice angler, cannot get to, all right? But also now with this spoon, you want to see this one? You've got $10? Deposit. I need deposit. I'm worried about your, I'm worried about your, you're retired, aren't you? No. You're not, no? Close. Close yeah. All right, keep working. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that spoon will go back. Why am I picking on this guy? <laughs> Sorry. This spoon will go into place other spoons won't. That's what you want. 
So if you're on a boat dock, it's got shade here on the outside edge, guess what? You don't have to work so hard. It's going to end up three stalls over there. In a matter of 40 foot, it will go and travel. Thanks. You're welcome. You wish, don't get a hook in yourself. I'm not responsible for accidents. All right. This thing will, for every one, for every two foot of fall, vertical fall, it will travel about one, almost one foot away from you. All right, so do the math on that. It's Mike Iaconelli. This is Bash U TV. Here's what's awesome about Bash U TV. You get the top instructors. You will learn things at Bash U that you will learn nowhere else. We take the mystery and the myths out of bass fishing. Real tools that help you catch more fish consistently. At Bass U TV, shoes are optional. And I like turtles. And that's why you want to check out Bass U TV. Join the Bass U family. Welcome to Bass U TV.